What's up guys and welcome back to the Reverbium channel on F122. I'm Sean as we're going to head into the next race weekend in Spain. We're going to get a few of these, just the regular activities going on in the background. Uh, just get a few more R&D points hopefully. Uh, increase some, uh, increase the chassis uh, uh, team building because we really need to work on the chassis of this car. It's really been holding us back getting those upgrades in so hopefully that will help speed through those as we're going to see we're going to see if we can get anything done which we are not going to be able to as we can only do one at a time on the chassis and we still have one going that's taken a while to get done so we're going to look into aero instead look at this rear wing upper flap and hopefully get this in it'll take a while to come in though not going to have it before spain or monaco we're going to have to wait before azerbaijan as long as it doesn't fail as well so we're going to Sim along here, get these uh, activities done, hopefully get some more parts in, spark plugs we done, engine we'll door cells repositioning done. Maybe we should have just waited for that to come we'll through to um, so we can get the screen. next uh, chassis department done. But now we have a decision to make on who our rival is going to be. We can choose between the man himself, Danny Rick, or Esteban Ocon. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, we're a bit closer to Ocon in the championship, so we're going to go for Ocon instead. Uh, of Ricardo, just give us a chance of maybe get, picking up some of those rivalry out. points, get some more acclaim, which will be helpful later on to get some more sponsors, get some more money coming in so we can upgrade some facilities. You can see we're currently 12th in the standings. Verstappen leads at the moment going into Spain. Will he extend his lead in this race? We'll have to wait to find out. The Ferraris really need to get back in this to try and uh, try and get back into the championship going to be a big race for them. Carlos Sainz at home for Ferrari in this race. Can he get something going? Bring back the championship for them? Who knows? We're going to take a look. Can we upgrade anything here on the chassis to try and help us? We really want the fabrication one and we're just short of the money so we're going to hold off doing anything else for now. We're going to head into qualifying. Our first qualifying lap around Spain. A little bit of traffic ahead of us but not so much that it's actually affected us during the lap or going to affect us thankfully. Uh, we're just nicely behind enough so the album's not actually causing an issue. We come through the chicane, run the final corner, album dives into the pit. We get on the accelerator. Can we get a good lap in first of all? Across the line, it's going to be a 119.8, which probably puts us in third behind the Red Bulls. But also, we drop down as we know we're not fast enough into seventh. This is an early lap. We come at the end, we're very wide on the, the hairpin there as we come up the hill. That might slow us down. You see, we're ahead of the time at the moment. A tenth of a second up. We're trying to keep it for two seconds, but can't get it done. Two green sectors early on. It's a good time now as we head into the final chicane up to three tenths, down to two tenths. We lose time for our second part of the chicane. They're not great around there. Can we get the power on just to save us up a bit? We're only going to marginally improve, but it's going to be enough to get us through to the next round of qualifying. Seventh place in Q1. Can we push on from here? YouTube. Can we get another Q3 finish in qualifying? As we come around for our first lap, we only leave it for one lap in Q2. Preserve the tyres, get them at their best. So we're currently down in 16th. Two green sectors as we come round. How are we looking round the final part of the circuit? We know we're not that great at. Nice bit of curve there. Bit too much curve on the inside of the right hander. But right round the final bend. Where are we going to be? 120.1 to beat. We did that in Q1. We can do it again in Q2. A 119.5 and it's into Q3 again, just in ninth position. We managed to get another Q3 in qualifying. Our qualifying pace is incredible in this car. It's a shame we can't hold it on during the race. But once again, just the one lap in Q3. So a bit wide there as we come into the final section. Again, wide, missing the court, missing the apex there. A little bit of curb. Is it going to be enough? I don't think it's going to be as good as the last two laps in the other qualifying sessions. Across the line, we're going to have to wait. It's ninth. We take ninth. It's not tenth for once. We've not fallen in Q3, where we usually do and end up at the back. And more importantly, we've beaten Esteban Ocon, our rival. Welcome along then to what promises to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix. It's a race which saw Max Verstappen take victory on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016 after that dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. 
Will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today? It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730 meter sprint down into turn one. This is a 2.9 mile racetrack overtaking is challenging through the 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high speed excitement to be found, including the flat out turn three and the terrifying blind right of turn nine. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Sergio Perez, and Norris. Fernando Alonso, Ricardo, the owner driver, and Esteban Ocon. Magnussen, Mick Schumacher, Pierre Gasly, and Fettel. Joe, Oscar Piastri, Lance Stroll, and Carlos Sainz. Sonoda, Bottas, Latifi, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. And with me today... So as we're going to head to the grid, Charles Leclerc is on pole position. Ferrari in a great chance here to get some points back on the Red Bulls, but it's not a good day for Carlos Sainz. His home Grand Prix, he's starting way down on the grid and he's in third as you can see he's going to be the one with the, with the biggest chance or would have been on points but it's not going to happen in the race for him but watch out for him as he's going to look to come through at the through the race from behind just the one-stop strategy here in spain so not not a lot of pit strategy wise but it could end up being a bit boring as, as well as spain's commonly known but we're going to head to five red lights for the spanish grand prix from ninth position what can we do it's lights out and away we go it's not the best of starts we get equal to ricardo on the first first section pulling away ocon's going to look to come up the inside of us he gets a great second phase of this start Magnussen around the outside as well. We go cau very cautious into turn one. Want to avoid any contact, which drops us down to 11th. It's not a great turn one from us. Everyone gets through nice and cleanly, but we've lost that way. We look to see if we can get around the outside of Magnussen, but it's a bit early for that. Tie is still a bit cold. We're not really able to find the grip to get full, uh, full throttle down that. Oh, and we squeeze on the back of Magnussen. A little bit of contact. Yellow flags here. I think everyone's fine though. As we get squeezed and just narrowly miss the back of Magnussen. A little bit of contact on the back there as we come down the hill into the left-hander. But it's 11th place where it's going to be as Schumacher is looking to battle us around the next section of the circuit. Side by side through there. We manage to hold off. We get the inside line on the right-hander. We get back in front. We hold on to 11th. We drop two places from the start. Not the start of the race that we wanted at all. We've lost a bit of time to Magnussen with pressure from Schumacher still from behind as we go through the hairpin. Still enough, only 0.6 per second, not too much to worry about. And hopefully, now we've settled into the lap, we'll be able to start getting our foot down a bit, get a bit of grip going, and hopefully pull some of that, that get back as you see into the two into the chicane section. We do get that time back, but lose a bit around the final corner. We come fly around again. You see, just haven't got the pace compared to the hasses around that final corner. So Schumacher closes in, we lose to Magnussen. It's Magnussen who is in tenth, Ricardo in ninth. Esteban Ocon has made his way up to 8th place, picked up 2 places there, great start from him as he now trails his teammate Fernando Alonso in 7th. The two Red Bulls seem to be struggling as Verstappen has dropped down to 6th and Sergio Perez in 5th. They'll want to be working their way up the pack here but Verstappen is on the hard tyres from the start, going alternative on the strategy so may have struggled to get the pace from the start off the start. George Russell in fourth, Norris in fifth, Hamilton in second and Charles Leclerc leads the Spanish Grand Prix after lap one. So a lot of work to do for the Red Bulls to try and extend their uh, lead at the top of the championship. But as I said, they are on the hard, so they have the alternate strategy. They're looking for the faster pace at the end of the race. We pick up with us on lap five, still behind Magnussen. We've got a bit of a gap to Schumacher. He's still in DRS range as we come down the home straight, but he can't really do anything down the straight into turn one. Get him over a second. We're focusing always in front of us on Magnussen, not having to worry from behind as we're 0.3 coming up the hill. As you can see on the left-hand side as well, Science has made his way up the 
up the pack into 13th. We've got to watch out from him from behind soon. So we come down the left-hander, down the hill, seeing if we can get as close to Magnussen as we can. We really don't want to get stuck behind. That's the problem with Spain. You can very easily just get bogged down behind someone if you can't make a pass. And that's something we want to try and avoid as Magnussen is losing time to Daniel Ricciardo. See the, not a big gap there to him as we don't want to let that happen to us. We don't have to make up that time ourselves. We want to get past Kevin Magnussen as we go very close around, around the hairpin right on the back of Magnussen. We can't get a move done, but we're going to stick to the back of him all the way through this next section and hope that we can get a move down the, down the home straight. Under DRS, that's where we're going to have our next chance. A lot of curb on that left-hander, though, which is going to slow us down a bit wide on the exit as well. And we lose so much pace around the final corner. Magnussen gets a bit of a gap, a six-tenth of a second gap. And that's going to be very difficult to make up down the straight, even with DRS. You can see how powerful it is down the straight. Magnussen defends well to the inside, so we have to back off. No way of making a move. Oh, but he's slow. He's slow through turn one and turn two. Loses the back end a bit. This is our chance up the hill. To get the ERS on early. Trying to go around the outside. A little bit of contact. Wheel to wheel action. We're going to look around the outside again for the next right hander. Lay on the break in. Can we make it stick around the outside? Yes, we can. A great move from us. We carry the speed for the right hander. Close off. As we come down the hill, we're up into 10th, into a points position. Let's have another look at that move. Magnussen defends the inside, loses the car a bit through the next section, opens up the gap around the outside for us. We just get on the throttle and get on it earlier. So we have this momentum through up the hill into the right-hander, get alongside, and then all it is is a bit of late braking. And again, we just able to make it stick around the outside with a bit of grip around that outside section of Magnussen. And he has no way to answer at all. So up into 10th, but we're now 2.3 seconds behind Daniel Ricciardo in 9th. So that's going to be difficult for us to make that gap up as we look at him and arrival Ocon in eighth Fernando Alonso still in seventh ahead of him and the Red Bulls still struggling on those hard tyres early on Verstappen seemingly held up by his teammate as well in fifth right on the tail of him but can't seem to get past Sergio Perez in fourth who have now dropped four seconds behind George Russell but obviously they know they have the faster tyres later on in, in the race where all the difference could be made. So Russell in fourth, Lando Norris in the McLaren all the way up in third, Lewis Hamilton second and Charles Leclerc way out in the lead. You can see from this view nothing behind him as he comes through this section of the, of the lap that easy for Leclerc at the moment but he ne knows he needs to keep pushing to try and extend that lead from the Red Bulls. So when it comes to the pit stops and they switch tyres... He's got enough of a gap that he can't make it up. As you look back to us now on lap 9, still in 10th. Two and a half seconds to Daniel Ricciardo, losing a bit of time to, to the McLaren. We don't have the speed advantage over the McLarens. We're being held back by not getting those chassis improvements through. The, we have the engine power, we just don't have the aero and the chassis combined with the car for the corners. We have the, the straights but not through the corners. We look back at Max Verstappen, the championship leader, stuck down in sixth, stuck behind his teammate all the time, losing out to Charles Leclerc in first as they a bigger and bigger gap between them and the leading pack. He needs to try and get his way through his teammate he clearly has the pace. That's what I said about Spain earlier. You can easily find yourself getting stuck behind your, uh, the cars. We see Carlos Sainz now looking to get up into 11th. He's making his way through the pack, round the outside of Magnussen through the left-hander. Magnussen's going to drop down another place as the Ferrari is too quick, but he comes back on the inside. Can Magnussen get the place back? No, he loses the car a bit and Sainz is through into 11th. We've now got to watch out for Carlos Sainz, even though he's four and a half seconds back. The extra pace of the Ferrari, he's so much quicker than us in that machinery that he's going to be keep he's going to keep making his way through the pack and look to get into the points. So we've got to be careful looking from behind there to make sure that we can hold him off and try and hold on to this point. But we've managed to close down on Daniel Ricciardo now as he's battling with Ocon. Only 1.3 seconds now. We've pulled back a huge amount of time. Are we going to be able to get enough in here to get? to make a move but it is our pit stop this lap so we've got to make a quick stop so we don't lose this time that we've just pulled back as both Ocon and Ricardo stay out we dive into the pits can we make it a good stop 
can we gain an advantage in the pits here and try and help us to push up further into the points into the pit lane we go can we get the entrance right into our pit box we seem to be the only people pitting on this lap we have one car coming in behind us it's a great time to come great uh time to steer in can we get a good stop we've got a hold up it's 3.9 seconds what went wrong there that's horrible it should have been between 2.2 and 2.5 something has gone wrong there in the pits and that's cost us massively about a second and a half we're going to have another look here at the replays we come in to the pit see what went wrong here and how this could harm us because it's going to make our gap to ricardo back over what it was before carlos science is going to be cloaked closer to us after he's pit as well as we turn in here what went wrong tires come off tires going on and it's this rear right tire here just not on properly the bit of a hesitation don't get on as quickly and it's cost us massively and that could cost us points when it comes to the end of this race if science well he will have the pace to catch us but if it makes it less of a competition that we can't hold him off for as long, that could be an issue. We've now got a job to do here to get up these hard tyres up to temperature. Will the undercut work is the big question. We've gone in earlier than everybody else. It's only Bottas who's also pit the same time as us. We've managed to come out ahead of Latifi, so we're not right behind everyone who's started on the mediums. He is just behind us though, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. His mediums will be worn here, so we shouldn't have too much pace over us. We sh shouldn't have to worry about any attack from behind. All it is now is trying to get these tyres up to temperature, get a nice lap in, and get a good out lap in to try and scrape back some of that time that we lost during the pit stop. As Daniel Ricciardo is going to come in this lap, so we're going to see where we're going to come out relative to him. Carlos Sainz is going to stay out, so it's going to give us... A, we're going to have to wait to see where we come out near him, but he, another lap in the mediums for him could harm us even more. If his mediums are in good condition, it could be horrible for us that he has the extra, extra pace on the faster tyres. Just depends on what he's managed to do with those tyres, if he's kept them in a good range or not. But Ricardo is going to come out massively ahead of us. He's already out of the pit lane as we come through to get up into 14th. And with what's that, 6.4, 6.2, it's coming down, thankfully, six seconds. Hopefully, he's going to fall even further. But looking around five seconds behind, there we go, 5.3 seconds behind Daniel Ricardo. Obviously, we have the advantage through the lap as. Uh, we have the warmer tyres on this lap, on the out lap of Ricardo. But now we're going to see, can we get out ahead of Carlos Sainz? We get this nice aerial view. We do get out ahead of Sainz. The pit stop wasn't that bad for us. That we managed to get back up into 10th ahead of the Ferrari. That's crucial for us as he's going to take a bit of time to warm his tyres. And this is going to be a huge lap for us to try and get ahead. You see Sainz in the background there, closing down, trying to close down. It's only 2.2 seconds now, and we're still 4.3 behind Ricardo. As he's still trailing Ocon in a nice little train here, who's now way behind his teammate Alonso. He's about 8.3 seconds behind Alonso in a bit of no man's land in seventh. Seven seconds behind eight-time world champion, sorry, seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton. Uh, George Russell's teammate just ahead of him. Lando Norris now drops down to fourth. Leclerc in third. And the two Red Bulls yet to pit in one and two. Perez still leading his teammate. Verstappen stuck behind his teammate here not being able to find a way through as Perez now dives into the pits, gives Verstappen the lead of the race, but as we know, Verstappen still to pit, still on those hard tyres, waiting to pit to go onto those faster mediums. Perez a bit early, I'd say, for those medium tyres. Uh, he's got a lot of work to do to keep them, keep them going. Um, but again, let, less fuel. Uh, he has a chance to obviously keep those tyres in a good condition, and we know Perez is good at tyre management. So Max Verstappen now leads the Spanish Grand Prix. The question is, can his worn hard tyres give him more of an advantage over Leclerc? Can he make this 11 second gap bigger to Leclerc to try and hold the lead after he's coming to the pits? We head back on board with ourselves. Carlos Sainz closing in behind us, now 1.7 seconds. We're not really making any gains on Daniel Ricciardo at all. We can't get any any pace to outdo him which is what we were experiencing earlier in the race as well the McLaren just a faster car than us especially through the corners 
that we just don't have the ability to close down. We kind of need Ricardo and Ocon to get a bit of side-by-side -side action, slow each other down as they try and defend and hold the positions, and hopefully that can drag them back towards us as we've had in previous races. We've managed to capitalise on other people challenging each other. So, but it's going to be a long 13 laps if we can't get any time back on these, just in no man's land and waiting for science to hunt us down two seconds behind us, slowly gaining everywhere. It's getting 0 0.3, 0 0.2 of a second. We managed to bring some of it back around there, but yeah, Carlos science is going to be a huge issue. Oh, it's a yellow flag. Alexander Owen is out of session, and it's a safety car, a full course safety car on lap 20 as Alex Albon is out of the race. Where has he gone wrong? We can't see it on the map. We're going to have to take a look here. As Zhou Guan Yu ahead of him. Oh, he loses it around the corner. And Albon just can't avoid the back of the Alfa Romeo. And the front wheel comes off. And he's right parked in the middle of the track of this safety car. Rightly to bring it out as Albon is just stranded. So behind the safety car, Max Verstappen is going to get a chance at a free pit stop maybe. As he still leads the race, hasn't pit yet. With Leclerc in second, then Norris in third. Will Red Bull take advantage of the safety car to try and give themselves a win in this race? It's turned on its head massively for Verstappen. He started in fourth and dropped down to sixth. So losing time in the pits, he was going to come back out probably in the same position behind his teammate, depending on what pace he was able to have on the hards compared to Perez mediums. But he's likely going to come out in sixth. He now has a huge chance just to come out a few places ahead and then with those mediums be right behind the pack of P of cars on hard tyres which will make his life so much easier closing the gap that would be there as there won't be one but will Red Bull they should take advantage of this as it wasn't long since Perez came in about two laps ago that Sergio Perez came in so Verstappen making these hard tyres work a lot longer so he should be due to come in anytime soon and here we go we see Verstappen come in under the safety car He's going to gain so much time doing this as everyone hasn't even caught up to the safety car yet. So they're still under the delta so they can't even gain any extra extra time. Then it's amazing for Red Bull. It's worked out perfectly for them. He will lose some places. Leclerc comes through. Norris comes through. Russell, Hamilton, Will Perez. I don't think Perez will make his way through. Yes, he will. Perez will make his way through. So it is sixth. For Verstappen, he's still come out in sixth place, but crucially, the pack will be bunched up behind the safety car that will just give him a straight run into attacking everyone on the hard tyres. You see here, the safety car's out, he's going to join the back of the pack. So it's a huge opportunity for Red Bull here on the mediums to get a win out of this race as the safety car is going to come in on lap 23 we have a chance here right behind Daniel Ricciardo as that's closed up that four second gap for us very helpfully as we let Ricciardo know we're there just let him get in the mirrors let him know we're there ready to attack trying to make a move down that straight we just need a good exit from the final corner it's something we've struggled with a lot during this race still letting Ricardo know we're there making sure that he's looking in his mirrors and not just looking at Ocon making trying to get him to make a mistake as we prepare to resume racing a lot of curb there and it's not going to be a great restart for us as at the slowest speed possible we managed to make a mistake and we're already way off the back of Ricardo down the straight obviously no DRS from the safety car restart but can we get some of the time back so much ERS being used down, down the straight to try and get that gap back nicely into turn one, make a little bit of time, lose the car slightly as we run wide in turn two, that's not good, going to lose even more time and drop over a second of Ricardo just from the first two corners, that's not what we needed at all, knowing that they're faster than already, we really need to stay in the DRS zone to try and get a chance of making a move here and maybe trying to get some more places and obviously science now with the faster car right behind us Managed to pull out a bit of a gap to him. Oh, and there's a yellow flag down in sector one. Joe has uh, seemed to have spun again. He seems to be struggling a lot with his car today, but he's got going again as we continue racing. So hopefully there won't be too much of an issue there. But Joe, maybe with a bit of damage uh, from that collision with Albon, just struggling with the car now. Maybe not being able to repair the rear of that car. 
and carrying a bit of damage from that. But Science now dropping even further behind us. I'm not sure what's going on with Carlos Science here, but it's great news for us as we might be able to hold on to 10th place. If Science can't find some speed, maybe struggling to get some heat back into those hard tyres on the safety car restart. But we've gained some time to Ricardo compared to where we were at the safety car restart. And Science is pit. Carlos Science has just come into the pits. I'm not sure what happened there. Must have picked up some damage somewhere on the restart. But that's huge for us. Gives us a great chance to stay in 10th place. As we now have the two Hasses behind us who have been able to get away from already in this race. So 10th place could and should be ours as Science won't have enough time to pull back on us now so we can fully look ahead can we get a move on the McLaren is now the big question can we get extra points from this race as we've got one less thing to worry about now nicely down into the left hander a new lease of life comes into us as we're driving knowing we can fully focus on attack not having to worry about behind because that's the issue we could get into if we get stuck behind Ricardo we get bogged down Science can then close in behind us and put us under a lot of pressure but we have free roam now from the back of this little pack to go on attack as there's a yellow flag in sector one again Joe seems to be really struggling with that car as he comes around the first sector must have some sort of damage from that collision as Science is already right on the back of him as you can see on the minimap down in the left hand corner we're going to keep training behind on Ricardo but we don't want to miss out on any of this action as we might be able to make a move into turn one or something as DRS is going to be re-enabled as we come down the home straight we will be in the in the train but obviously Ricardo will also have it ahead of us as we have this nice little pack us to Ricardo, Ocon Alonso and Hamilton who is leading the front of this pack holding everyone up not quite sure what's going on with the Mercedes of Hamilton as he seems to be way off the pace, not been able to get ahead of Alonso. He'd built up a big gap to him earlier in the race, but not able to do it this time round. And the two Red Bulls looking to make their way up the pack into fourth and fifth, very close behind George Russell. Can they gain any extra points to help them in the championship? Stop Leclerc getting as many points as we stick on the back of this train through lap 26. I think it's going to be tough for us to actually gain any places through here as we don't have an advantage with the DRS as we have the straight line speed but with people having DRS ahead of us it's going to be so difficult to make advantage of it and actually get through and I think we may just get stuck in this pack for the rest of the race which isn't what we want at all so as we come through to the final part of the lap we're still on the back of Ricardo. not much really going on anywhere in the race as it seemed to be a bit of a procession uh, Carlos Sainz has got through Joe, Joe Guan Yu up into 20th but it's going to be too much of an ask for him to try and get back to where he was before the pit stop again we're losing time through the final corner to Daniel Ricciardo we're not great through there at all and just have no chance of making that time up into turn one. Get this lovely aerial view into turn one. But we're going to skip ahead to lap 30 now. Three laps to go as we cross over for lap 31. Still stuck behind Daniel Ricciardo. We've built out a great advantage to Mick Schumacher behind seven seconds. No issue of the hat is coming through at all for us in this race. We only focus ahead. Ocon has lost a bit of time now to his teammate, which puts these two just in a, a little battle, which gives us a chance, more of a chance now to maybe get through, as we, uh, as they don't have, or Ocon probably won't have DRS. Ricardo will, but it means both of us can then look to mount an attack on Ocon. There's a little thing of a, a yellow flag, but that issue seems to have gone now, as we come through to the middle sector of the race come through the two sweeping corners looking onto the straight for the DRS the yellow flags are out yellow warning oh onto the back of Ricardo and Joe's the wrong way on the track Joe Guan Yu on the wrong way go around the track we've hit the back of Ricardo we're going to keep going can we dive around the outside take advantage of all these slow cars as Russell and Alonso pull uh, get pulled back we go right around the outside up into seventh place what a move from us we've taken huge advantage of that issue with Joe but we seem to have picked up some damage as we can't hold the car together through the sh first part of the chicanes as we come through the final part of the lap you can see the warning symbol down the right hand side we've picked up some front wing damage from that hit with Ricardo. we're going to stay out though it's too late in the race now to do anything as we're going to look back at what happened here as Joe under blue flags doesn't give a huge amount of room to uh, Hamilton as he com comes through 
sticks on the back of Hamilton through the next section and he loses the rear end for the first part of the corners slows down but holds the car together through the right hander as we see oh he loses the car the back end through there slows everyone down as we come through that big collision with Ricardo and we struggle to avoid or say struggle we didn't avoid any collision but managed to take advantage of all the cars in front of us slowing down apart from Russell as we get up into seventh with two laps to go we've gained some places but we've got a huge task to get on with as we have some quite serious front wing damage so these corners especially as early as you see here we can't get the car turned in as Alonso is going to come through to us round the bend we're going to lose a place down into eighth we're going to look to try and get back up the inside and we managed to make get the move we run a bit wide though it opens the door for Ocon who comes flying through our rival ahead of us into seventh what a move that was from the Frenchman as we come through to where the incident happened last time round as we are really struggling to hold on here with this front wing. Ricardo looking to make a move down the straight. He gets up the inside of us with DRS. Even though we have it as well, he's going to mount a big challenge around the outside. We managed to hold off, block off, but Alonso comes through on Ricardo. What a move that was from Fernando Alonso at his home Grand Prix to try and get back up to where he was and we're, he's going to look for a move up the inside into the final set oh collision as he bounces off off the curb comes back behind us doesn't take the position as there's a bit of bit of a more collision between us and a driver but for once it wasn't our fault down the street we've used so much ERS already we hardly have any more you see the damage on the front wing there pretty serious Alonso up on the inside we have no way of trying to stop him round the outside can we get on the inside of the left hander we can squeeze him a bit to the outside but we're now wide for the right hander up the hill we just don't have the ability to get the car turned in at any speed so Alonso easily comes through Ricardo comes through now we're back down to 10th late on the brakes we can't hold together and Schumacher out of nowhere has come through he's on the back of the pack and he's through into 10th we couldn't hold on to the car through the corner at all the front wing really causing us issues on the final lap of this race Magnussen closed down behind us Gasly now behind us as well we've got to do everything we can to try and hold on although we're out of the points we're gonna have no way of getting back to attack it's absolute carnage at the end of the race with Magnussen coming through as well Gasly looking to make an attack we were in a great position, obviously taking advantage of that co of that collision uh, or the incident with Joe. Charles Leclerc will win the race. He'll pull back in the championship, but we have a serious job to do here. We have extra damage probably from that collision with Alonso. You can see it's now red in the bottom right corner. Can we hold on? to Yuki Tsunoda who's made his way through Gasly now everything's happening at the end of this race we lose the back end on the curb around the final corner Tsunoda's going to try and get us before the line can we hold on it's going to be close but we hold on as Tsunoda comes flying through not a great end to the race for us we thought we'd made a great move there to get up an extra points we just couldn't hold on with the damage Max Verstappen gets driver of the day for pulling through into the podium positions we see Charles Leclerc here winning the race pulling back on the Red Bulls but the Red Bulls are able to come through and both take podium positions to limit the damage so great strategy by the, Red, by the Red Bulls almost pulled off to get the win but Leclerc was too much for the Red Bulls Ferrari take the win here in Spain and keep the championship battle going they've pulled enough they've pulled some points back can Leclerc get back in range now and carry this momentum to mount a challenge on the two Red Bulls as Charles Leclerc will head to the podium now to celebrate the win. Obviously he would have hoped other people on the podium instead of being flanked by the two Red Bulls but he'll be happy with the win to take 25 points from the race. As we see that what this does for the championship, Verstappen out in the lead. Perez 27 points behind. Leclerc now moves ahead of Carlos Sainz with that poor race from him in his home Grand Prix. We sit in 12th uh, with 10 points behind Valtteri Bottas. And for the constructors, Red Bull 65 points ahead of Ferrari. A lot of work for Ferrari to do in the constructors. So be sure to come back for future episodes to keep an eye on this championship. I can't wait to see what's next.